Hey, what's up everybody? It's AJ with Dirt Tracks. This is the start of the 2024 season. This is the first thing I'm doing this year for you guys, so I'm excited about that. And today I have something cool to show you. Brand new 2024 Maverick X3 DS. Now, this is the base model Maverick X3, but let me give you a little bit of um, sort of your options when it comes to Maverick for 2024. There is only a single Maverick Trail available. There are four Maverick Sports. There's 20 Maverick X3s, 20 different versions between two and four seat. I, I thought my computer was glitching. There was so many options on the screen, but it's not. There's 20 of them. And then when you go to Maverick R, I didn't even look at that because that's a whole nother, nother level. But today I wanted to <clears throat> not go for like the $45,000 Maverick X3 Turbo R with a whole bunch of other acronyms after it. I wanted to show you what the entry level is because that's what this is. This is a turbo, but it's only the 135 horsepower turbo. It's not the 200 horse. I mean, that's not a bad thing. This is about 21,999 US and it's $27,099 Canadian. Side-by-sides aren't cheap anymore. If you want a high performance, really well performing, 20 inches of front and rear suspension travel side-by-side, you're gonna pay for it because we're living in that world. Um, some of the cool things about this product, this, and then when I say that it's entry level and when I tell you the price, you're like, what, entry level, $27,000 Canadian, 22,000 American. Entry level is like something that I just wanna throw out the window because it pretty much goes from like really awesome to like extremely awesome. So entry level, this thing comes with a brand, actually Showa we've never seen in off-road before. Now it has 2.5 inch body, piggyback, Showa, high speed and low speed compression, as well as dual rate spring front and rear shocks. They're really cool. And I'm excited to see this because Showa has typically been just a motorcycle product up to this point. I mean, we really haven't seen them in off-road at all. And now they're making their way in with Can-Am. And that's really cool because I like to see more manufacturers building more shocks. It makes everybody more competitive and, um, you know, just pushes the technology and hopefully lowers the price. I'm not gonna say that, but I guess I did. <coughs> Showa shocks, really nice. They look great. Um, they're they're just really good looking and they're a really high quality shock package. Showa knows what they're doing. They know how to make product um, and, and I really like seeing them in the market. So you're getting an awesome set of shocks. Like I said, 2.5 inch bodies. You can go out and smash these things through whatever you want and they're gonna take it. Plus the dual rate springs and they're 2.5 inch bodies. So they're just beefy and they're huge. 20 inches of suspension travel up front, 20 inches of suspension travel out back. It's matched, it's even. The other thing that's even and matched are the 30 inch by 10 carnivores. It's a square tire setup all the way around. You can rotate these if you want to, or you can just burn right through them, which you're going to, because this thing, even at 135 horsepower, still has power for days and is very fun and exciting. 14 inch aluminum rims. Do I love them? Well, I mean, you know what? They gotta start somewhere, right? The upgraded packages come with different looking rims. I don't mind these. I think they're a, they're a very acceptable looking tire and rim uh, package. Um, honestly, I'm getting a little bored with black rims. Black rims on pickup trucks, you can hate me all you want, but I'm getting tired of it. Honestly, I see a chrome rim now and I'm like, oh, look at that, a chrome rim. It used to be, oh, look at that, a black rim. Uh, I, I, I'd like to see some more accents, and some more colors, but hey, it's not a bad looking rim and it does the job that it's supposed to. Really, I'm complaining about small things. The other thing that I love about this vehicle to offset that is the candy red color. It's very appealing. It looks really good and in the sun it sparkles. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm attracted to sparkly, shiny things. Now, <clears throat> Can-Am X3. So this is not like 72 inches wide. It's not 70 inches wide. It's not 68 inches wide. It's 64 inches wide. Yeah, it's a lot wider than a trail. It's a lot wider than a sport, but it is a Maverick X3. So you're looking for something that's a bit bigger. It is the narrowest version of the X3 that you can get at 64 inches. So you can still take this out, still have fun on a lot of trail systems. Some of them you just aren't gonna fit on because there's a lot that are 50 inches or less. So you're gonna have to go look at a, uh, a Maverick trail if you wanna ride on those ones. Um, interior of this vehicle, very similar to what you find on all X3s, just the, um, like, like I said, it's, it's not the cheaper version. It's just the more basic interior. The seats are just all black. You don't have like the color inset stitching and you know, the panels and there might be a little bit more bolstering as you go up through the, the model levels and as you spend quite a bit more. But the seat is really comfortable, adjustable uh, and, and holds you, you know, performance wise really tightly and fits good. So if you're gonna go out and you know, you're gonna smash the dunes or you're gonna go out and you're gonna ride the trails really hard or you're gonna go out and you're gonna run the logging roads or whatever, you're gonna feel comfortable in this seat. It's very ergonomically correct. It fits really good, it feels really good. It's waterproof. Um, you know, you can power wash out the inside of this cab if you need to. 
works really good. It has the, just the, the traditional 4.5 inch display on it. Nothing fancy, doesn't really give you a whole lot of information, but it gives you everything that you need and that's all that you really need to go out and have fun. Does have a <clears throat> uh, high torque tri-mode DPS on it. You're gonna see the power steering motor underneath here. It's quite a big unit, it sticks out a little bit. Um, the high torque system means that it's gonna be able to turn those 30 inch carnivores without any problems. Uh, and like I said, it's tri-mode and it is high torque. So you can adjust the, the level through the three tri-modes um, should you want to. If you're doing like slower rock crawling or you're in a more technical situation, um, putting it on the high setting just means that the little inputs are gonna give you more outputs and um, it's gonna give you a little bit more power into that. Uh, you know, that power steering unit. When you set it on the lower settings, when you're running at higher speeds, I really find that more confidence inspiring. High at high speeds, while it is progressive, it also feels just a little bit twitchy um, on high. And Luke and I both agree, we never really run this setting on high unless we're doing strictly like a crawling or low speed technical setting. Um, otherwise it's in either uh, minimum or medium. So those are the settings that we really like. <coughs> um, other thing it has, ITC uh, drive-by-wire throttle. So it's an intelligent throttle control and the drive-by-wire system that uh, Can-Am does actually is really good. It's not laggy, it's not um, you know kind of goofy where you're tipping in on the throttle one time and it's you know accelerating and then the next time you gotta go deeper into it to get it to accelerate. It really works good, does what it's supposed to. And uh, I've never had anybody really complain about the drive-by-wire system on Can-Ams, they work really good. So I like that, it's a nice system. It does have, um, with the, the front differential, it has the quick lock front end, so it's gonna engage that front diff and you're gonna have you know a fully locked front diff should you want it. It has the other features like trail active and whatnot, so you can be um, you know in four wheel drive without it fully locked up, so you're not getting super hard steering and just all those things. It's got switches on the dash that you can play around with, but you're gonna get the best performance possible if you want four wheel drive in a trail setting, so you don't wanna feel that front diff locked up 90% of the time. And then it's also gonna have um, the other feature where if you want that front diff fully locked up, you can lock that sucker up. It's gonna give you the visco lock or the, the quick lock, you know, where it's completely engaged and, you know, pulling with all four tires and you're not questioning whether you're getting four wheel drive. So Can-Am's done a really good job getting that all figured out. Uh, something else that I like about Can-Am products, and it's gonna sound silly, this is the key. Um, and you know what, nowadays with stuff being as expensive as it is, I wanna know that there's some kind of security on my side-by-side. -side. So you walk away from this thing, you know, I'm down in West Virginia, I'm getting a burger at the, the local burger pit, and I'm having a great time with, you know, me and my wife. Um, I wanna pull the key off and know that somebody's not just gonna pull up and be able to jam another key on there or, you know, grab this thing, toss it in a trailer. And by the way, I'm not saying that West Virginia has theft because I've never had anything stolen there. I'm just using it as an example. I, I wanna know that somebody can't just take this thing and, you know, go, cut a key for it and be gone. And DESS is a underappreciated feature on all Can-Am, um, Sea-Doo, Ski-Doo, all of the products they make. It's a cool little RF tagged programmed, I don't know what you call this. It's not a fob, it's like a plug. A, I would call it a dongle, but um, I find that word really funny. But it snaps onto a little dome in there and it tells the computer, hey, this guy owns this thing, he's good to go. And I appreciate that about Can-Am because there is some level of security. The other thing that's cool with having just this single key fob plug-in thinger is that it's got a push to start. And I don't know, I mean, you buy a BMW, you buy an Audi, you buy a Lamborghini, you buy a Ferrari, they've all got push to start now. I like it, I think it's cool. It's just, it, it's just better than twisting the key. I'm sorry, not that it's a big deal, but when you're buying a, a really cool product, I, I, I do want to have some of those cool features. So I, I like that. Um, <clears throat> quarter doors on this vehicle. You can buy the lower enclosed piece from Can-Am. Um, if you buy the XMR, I believe it comes with the lower close off panel, but you can go to your dealership and buy it. There's probably some aftermarket companies who sell the same thing just to clip in here. It, it just, you know, screws on the inside of the door and you'll get your fully covered door if you want. My only gripe with these quarter doors, I love them, love the way they look. Um, they, Yes, all doors do rattle a little bit. Um, the only thing I don't like is the door opener and it's not a big deal. Again, I'm just being picky. I gotta tell you the stuff I do and don't like. There's very few things that I don't like about this, but one of the things that I don't love is just this, this cable system for opening it. Um, I kind of like the, the Polaris where it's got a little steel button that you just push on and it's literally right where your hand falls right here. This one, you gotta reach in, you gotta find the little strap and give it a pull. Does it work? 
yes, it works just fine. Um, could it be better? Well, I think so, but hey, I gotta complain about something. Entry into the vehicle is really good. The way that you fit inside of this thing is excellent. Um, you know, even if even if I was six six and I had another hundred pounds, I'm I'm gonna be able to get in here no problem. It's a nice easy entry, good area for your legs. When you get in, one of the nicest features about an X3 is that they they designed the cockpit with people and the seat with people who actually designed seats for like sports cars and race cars. They they wanted it to fit proper, and when you get in, you feel like you're laid back. You're like, okay, I'm in a racing sim right now. Um, don't take that literally drive safe, but you're like, you're, it feels like you're in like a little race car because you are, I mean, a Maverick X3 is a little race car and it fits perfect. Your legs are stretched out in front of you. So you're not feeling like you're all cramped up and you know, tight in here. And it's like, oh man, I just can't move around. Even with the door closed, like really good elbow room. I'm not going to feel like I'm getting into anything. And then, like I said before, it's got the adjustable seat. So if you want to get right up into the steering wheel and into the gas pedal, if you're a shorter person, um, you're gonna fit in here just fine and you're gonna feel comfortable. Other thing that's really nice in here, this steering wheel, it's got the center point on it, which is cool. I mean, I think it'd be cooler if it had a little like red line on it instead of just the black cutout, but whatever, I'm being picky again. It's rubber, it's like, it's totally texturized. It's not that, forgive me for saying, it's not that plastic crap steering wheel that other people have put on in years past. It's plastic in the center where you're not gonna use it, it's rubber all the way around here. And it just feels like, you know what, if it was raining, I would get a good grip on this. If it was muddy, I'd be able to find texture and find grip. And when you're running something that's 135 horsepower, you're running the bigger one at 200 horsepower. You, the last thing you want to do is go, oh crap, I'm, I'm steering, I'm, I'm grabbing at the steering wheel and I'm slipping. Really nice, super tight. It's like a go-kart style steering wheel, really, really like tight circle. But because it has that high output um, uh, DPS system, the high torque, you don't need anything more than the steering wheel. You're not using the torque of your arms, like arm over, you know, hand over handing, trying to like muscle this thing to get it to turn those carnivores. It'll do it on its own. It's no problem. It works just fine. So I really like that. Um, on board, you're going to find, I, I'm pretty certain the number is 2.5 gallons or about 9.4 liters of onboard storage. That's going to come by the way of this little trunk here. Um, you know, enough for the tool kit, a microfiber cloth, and probably two bottles of water. Um, there's not, there's not a ton of room in there, but there is some, um, this little area here is not a storage. It's for your, uh, your brake reservoir and your, um, uh, your extra fuses, but it does look like it. And initially that's what I came in and I was like, Oh, another storage. It's not, but there is there, you know, there's two cup holders at my arm. It, it's got some onboard storage. It's good. The rear cargo rack, uh, will hold 200 pounds. It's enough for you to put, you know, one of the Can-Am coolers or a different brand cooler on there and, you know, bring along enough food and snacks and, and overnight gear, you know, you can pack tents on there and, and whatever you need. You're going to be able to bring up to 200 pounds of stuff on the back. Reasonable. If you need more, you can get a roof rack system or, or do something bigger like that and carry some more up top if you need to. Um, the cockpit wise, other than that, I think that's pretty much everything. Passenger uh, comfort is really good. And the passenger does have, just like the, the driver does inside this door, there is a handhold here. And that's where the passenger also has a handhold so they can grab there as well. Um, I guess one thing that I should mention too, these doors do tend to have almost like a, a bit of tension on them. So they don't just slam back shut. When you open them up, they stay there. And that's that's a, a nice thing too, because there's some some of them from uh, different brands and, and Can-Am over the years where they just kind of want to, you know, rattle around and slam shut. But I think they've got these joints a little bit tighter just so that they don't rattle around. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the inside. This does not have, um, you know, four point or five point harnesses. It just has a regular uh, shoulder belt, which I'm okay with. There are the upgraded versions and the different versions that are gonna come with those uh, different harnesses with the auto retract feature on them. Honestly, I yes, they're safer for sure. And if you're running a Maverick R and you're out in the dunes and you're jumping stuff and you know ripping around doing you know 80, 90 miles an hour, they it is very important to have those. For a vehicle like this that is a little bit more kind of trail focused and um, I'm not gonna say entry level because this isn't an entry level side by side by any stretch of the imagination, but this rig, I like the shoulder belt. I like the ease of it. You know, I don't have to do this thing and this thing and this thing. And you know, like I, I literally feel like I gotta go to like a weekend course to figure out how to get into the seatbelt of some of these side-by-sides, not to mention all the straps down here. And you go through a couple mud holes, they get jammed full of dirt. And then you're like, crap, Luke was riding this last time. I need to adjust it. Um, I, and, and you can't because it just doesn't wanna move. So I, I like a shoulder belt. It works good. 
I'm used to it. Um, like I said, getting in and out of this thing, not hard at all, very easy. Um, the overall weight of this is roughly about 1,550 pounds. Um, is that good or bad? I don't know. I didn't compare it against the competition. It's 1,550 pounds. That's dry weight. Uh, it does hold 40 liters of fuel. I think that's 10.5 gallons roughly. Um, how far will it go? How much are you pushing the gas down? Uh, you know, you can run all day on one of these things on a tank of gas and have a lot of fun and not have to be too worried. It's, it's, uh, it's not like it doesn't carry enough fuel. Um, that 1550 pound weight number, like I said, is dry. So that's like no battery acid, no coolant, um, no oil in any of the differentials, no oil in the engine, no gas in the gas tank. Um, probably not even any brake fluid in the brake system. So <clears throat> it's not a realistic number. Uh, maybe one day we'll start weighing these things, but at the end of the day, if it weighs another 250 pounds, it makes no difference because the 135 horsepower is gonna carry you down the road just fine. Um, <clears throat> walking around on it, access to all of the clickers, super easy. The ones up front are out front, the ones back here are right on the top, so you got your high speed and low speed. These shocks do not have a rebound uh, adjustment on them. They are strictly high speed and low speed compression adjustability. Um, because it is a Maverick, it uh, Maverick X3, it has the 900 Ace engine in it. Um, it's the turbo 900 Ace engine. It has the P drive primary, which is like the best primary ever made. I mean, that thing honestly is buttery smooth and has proven to really be uh, good on belts. And then it has the uh, quick response system X secondary clutch. So the QRS X secondary clutch, um, really good package. Both of them are designed to like you know, pump air in and out of that clutch uh, housing and they've got fins on them. And I mean, Can-Am has made that thing like spandex tight onto those clutches so that the fins on the primary and the secondary are actually working like air pumps and they're getting that air in and out of the clutches so that we're keeping them cooler. And that's a really important thing because the last thing you wanna do is blow a belt on your side-by-side -side because it sucks to change them. And I don't care who says, oh, it's easy. It takes me five minutes. No, it doesn't, it sucks. So having a company that's taking the time to think about trying not to blow belts is really important. And on 135 horsepower, 900 ace, you're not gonna have a lot of belt problems. As long as you use your head, you put the thing in low when you're going up real, real steep climbs at low speed. And you know you don't try to crawl through rock piles um, in high range. Just put it in low when it needs it and enjoy, everything will be good. Obviously you've got the TTA, like the trailing arm suspension out back. These trailing arms are fricking huge so beefy everything back here is beefy it's got the like the virtual five link rear end um you know it's got all the just beefed up x3 suspension components it looks like an absolute brute from the back i love the way that this thing looks i love can am's design some people have said in the past yeah but it doesn't have much of a rear bumper it's like well no it doesn't but it's not a maverick trail it's not a commander if you want a rear bumper go buy a commander with a box on it this thing, you can buy the rear bumpers from Can-Am and put one on here if you want. But I mean, really, are you going out and backing into trees and, and, and you know, backing into buddies? No, you're not. So um, I, I don't think it needs a rear bumper. It does have a rear tow hook though. So you can pull all your buddies out when they get stuck. I, I like the way that this thing looks at the back. I think Can-Am's done a great job on the X3 of designing it. I know a lot of people talk about the Maverick R now. Um, truthfully, the Maverick R is a very specific vehicle for a very specific set of conditions. And where we ride, it's not as, as important. I mean, yeah, it's very cool, but 72, 74, you know, all the big, the big numbers, they're hard to fit on most trail systems. And this at 64 is still really flipping wide, but very stable, very confident and very fun. Do I like 200 horsepower over the 135? Sure I do. I mean, I always want more horsepower. I love more horsepower. Horsepower is great, but do I need more horsepower than 135? No, honestly, I can go out and have a blast all day long. Two people in this, put 200 pounds in the back, fill it up with gas. I could load it up with a spare tire and put a roof rack on it if I wanted to. And that 135 horsepower is still gonna give me ultimate fun, you know, great enjoyment. If I wanna take this thing out to a track, which I know 99.999% of people are never gonna do. If you wanted to take this out to a track and go jump this thing, 135 horsepower is more than enough. 20 inches of suspension, 2.5 inch body, show of shocks all more than enough to go out and rip this thing. Take it to the dunes, jump it off of a dune, jump it through the whoop sections down where it's all rutted out, run it at 60 miles an hour through two and a half foot whoops. It's gonna do all of those things should you want. But really I find this DS to be more of the kinda 
I'm not going to call it East Coast, but that sort of idea where you're, you're running more trails with this. It's narrower. It'll go more places. And I mean, truthfully, with what we're spending on vehicles nowadays, like $27,100 Canadian, $22,000, I believe it was American. I mean, do you need more than that? This is a this is giving you a lot. It it does cost a lot. These are not cheap. Like you you're talking a very premium, very high quality product. Um, I don't I don't want to spend more than than that on on a vehicle right now. I want to go out and have fun and make sure that I like it. If I'm not, you know, if I'm not 100% sure about this sport, I'm not going to go buy the Maverick R right now because. I want to make sure that I love what I'm doing. And you start at this level, don't think looking at the entry level Maverick X3 that it's budget, that it's lower quality, that it's less. It's a it's it's a really, really, really good side by side. It works really good. It gives you all the fun and all the features that you know the higher level ones give you. It's just, yeah, you've got different quality shocks, you've got maybe less stitching on the seats, you've got a different tire and rim package. Um, you know, sure, there's some of that stuff. And, and no, it's not the XMR. Uh, no, it's not the 200 horsepower one, but this is everything that you want to go out and have fun off-road if you want 64 inches wide. Everybody knows that I'm a huge fan of like the Commander. If I'm gonna go out and buy a vehicle for me and my family, it's probably gonna be a Commander. It's not necessarily gonna be a Maverick X3 right now. But when my kids get older, and when I'm a little less focused about doing just stuff around the house and, and, and going out and having fun after doing that, and I don't need that tilting box, X3 is going to be the transition. That's where we're going to be when my kids are teenagers and they're like, dad, go faster, you know, jump that. Um, this is an awesome product. Don't, don't overlook on the website, the, the DS don't, don't do it because it's, it, that's a, that'll be a, a big mistake. This thing I, again, I hate the word entry level because it's not. It's a really good side-by-side. -side. I'm excited for the test ride. You guys are going to see that real soon. Um, I'm excited for you to see us push it around and, you know, go beat on it, jump it, um, run the trails with it, have a lot of fun. I'm going to find my butt planted in this seat quite a bit this summer, and I'm excited for you guys to, uh, to see more about it, see us put some miles on it, and really um, be able to understand exactly what we mean by uh, just how potent and how good we believe that this thing is. Something else I didn't mention is that it does have kind of an integrated front bumper on it. I know it looks kind of like it doesn't, but there is solid steel in behind the front. So I've heard people in the past be like, oh man, the front end of that thing would just come apart right away if you bumped into something. Don't bump into something. The tires actually stick out past the front. So just drive better than those people who make that comment. Um, but it does have a full front bumper built in behind the grill. They're trying to make it look a little less like steel bumperish out front, more integrated. I like that. And again, there are so many Can-Am accessories, so many accessories. You can do anything you want to this vehicle. Like the world is your oyster. So if you want a big gnarly XMR front bumper, you know, a big Dragonfire racing front bumper that's bright red and you know, you can mount 17 lights to it's there it's an option but it does have a nice front uh front bumper built in behind the uh the very very nice looking uh front end on this this buggy so um that is there i will start it up for you because i know that i always forget to do that um let's hear how it sounds it's a refined motor it's the it's the ace 900 they put this thing in what do they put this in they put it in uh they put it in side by sides they put it in snowmobiles. They put it in the Riker. They put it in sea -Dews. The only thing they don't put this in is an ATV. Maybe they will in the future, although it's pretty big to put in an ATV, but um, this motor is in everything, so it's very refined. Like, just clean sounding. And you know what I appreciate? I'm not hearing the noise from between my arms in the cockpit. I'm hearing it from out back behind the vehicle. So the firewall, or not the firewall, the, the rear firewall behind me has a lot of insulation in it and it's, it's blocking a lot of that noise that you'd normally hear from a motor. Doesn't sound as good right now, but wide open down the road, trust me, that sounds pretty good. Anyways, hope you guys like that. Uh, make sure that you uh, like, subscribe to our page, check out the stuff. We're gonna be coming with all kinds of new uh, test rides, trail techs, travel features walk around videos, everything you can imagine from dirt tracks. We're going to be coming with that stuff real soon. So uh, keep checking our stuff out. And uh, yeah, we're hoping that you're having fun out on the trails too.